We have been considering for a while the journey of the believer. And we've taken our text from Psalm 130, specifically, what it says that Psalm 120 to Psalm 134, 15 Psalms are referred to as the songs of the grace. Historically speaking, they were songs that were sung by the pilgrims as they ascended to Jerusalem for the feast. So, for us, now, they are spiritual messages because songs in the spirit, language of the spirit, in the language of prophecy, songs are messages. Now, just as they sang the songs as they ascended to Jerusalem, there are messages God has given us, which we shall rehearse, we are singing, as we are going to appear before the Lord in Zion. And we say that, you see, they speak of the character of the life and experiences of the pilgrim. You are a pilgrim, I am a pilgrim. We began when we left Egypt, and our destination is Canaan. Amen. And the Lord will not allow any of us to perish on the way, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they speak of the journey of the believer, experiences of the believer from conversion to perfection. We remember that we have looked at some aspects of it. We looked at when the devil tears, you know, you in the face. We looked at when the devil tears the church in the face. So we are basically looking in this other. There are several that is a, it will take a while as the Lord will take them in portions as they come. Because there are some aspects of the signs we have not even looked at. But they are just talking about your experience. Now, brethren, or let me put it this way. Your expected experiences. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says, Lest Satan take an advantage of us, for we are not what? Ignorant of his devices. So you should not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Amen. You should be well uh, briefed by your spiritual experiences, by the word of God, by the uh, by, by our, our relationship with the Holy Ghost, nothing should take us by surprise, brethren. And one of the, let me tell us something, one of the weapons, the tools of the enemy against the saints is surprise attack. And that's the truth. You see, that Jesus Christ said, if, a, if the owner of the house had known in what hour the thief would come, he would have taken care of his house. Eh? He would not have allowed his house to be broken through. So naturally, thieves don't tell you they are coming. I want you to understand the Bible time when this scripture was written. Of course, now, because we are the end times, we are seeing weird things. Weird things you write a community, they are coming and they will go. But at the time this scripture was written, thieves take by surprise. Even up to now, they still take by surprise. Now, brethren, our enemy should not take us by surprise. That's the essence of this message of this series, the journey of the saints. What are the characteristics of this journey? What are the expectations of this journey? What are the things you expect so that the enemy will not take you for granted? Because your reaction in the days of challenges is dictated by your expectation. Amen. If you are traveling from Abuja to Kaduna, and in your mind, you think, oh, Abuja to Kaduna. Maybe if you traveled Abuja to Kaduna about 20 years ago, when everything was nylon tar, you can just say, look, I'm just going to cruise. I want to get to Kaduna in one and a half hours. There was a time it was possible. And you just feel, you just cruise at 160, 180, 200. But somebody tells you that, no, oh, at this junction, this junction, there are five places that you have to slow down. Now, that information will help you. You will check your speedometer when you are approaching those places. And you will not be overtaken. So when you see the bad gullies and you have to meander, then you will not be surprised. Brethren, I want to say again, our enemy shall not take us by surprise. Certain things happen to certain brethren. And they accuse God. They embarrass the name of the Lord. And some people say, God, but I didn't expect this of you. I mean, all these years I've served you. Why did you allow this to happen? God, I'm not, I'm not happy with you. 
Some of those statements are careless and irresponsible statements. God has told us in his word, by relationship with the Holy Ghost, apart from even the one written in his word, when we interact closely with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says it will show you what to come. So my prayer, brethren, is that as we go through this series, we will have so much of spiritual shock absorbers that it will not be Satan taking us by surprise. We shall be the one waiting for him. Amen. We shall be the one waiting for him. When the devil knows that he can't take us by surprise, he will be afraid of us. Amen. So if the enemy has embarrassed you, assaulted you, taking you by surprise, say, Satan, it is no more. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, we shall rebuke strong nations from what? From afar. They won't even get close to us. And then you sit on the ground and put your hand upon your head and cry. No. As to whether the kingdom of darkness is against you as a believer, it's not, a good, it's not, it's not news. You understand? It's not news. The devil, David says something. He said, God, Deliver me from my enemy because he fights against me daily. Go and check that scripture. He said, he fighted daily. The enemy fights daily. So you are up and against him. Before you leave your house in the morning, you are ready for his antics. In fact, there are times that the Holy Ghost will tell you what will happen in the course of the day. Do you know it happens? The Holy Ghost will tell you people to avoid. There are times Satan sends some people to you. They come as friends. But they have that guy in their, in, their, in their closet. The Lord will let you know ahead of time. So now, when you have this information about the character of your journey as a believer, you are not going to be meat, cheap meat for the enemy. The Bible says, let Satan take an advantage of us. From today, just tell God, say, God, Satan will no longer take an advantage of me because I am not ignorant of his devices. I will overtake him. I will, I will go ahead of him. I will be waiting for him. And I will overcome him. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now the warfare of the saints. Let's look at the book of Daniel chapter 12. At the time of the end, there is no doubt that the saints of the Lord shall wage warfare. And let me say this. The kind that has never been waged before. But I thank the Lord because the Bible says where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. I want to tell us, brethren, that the grace, the level of grace available for us, the level of commitments of God available for us now is before those that have gone ahead of us. Now, I read chapter 12, verse 1. Daniel chapter 12. It says, and at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince we stand there for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Amen. Now, there are two sides to verse 1. One is information the second is a promise. Take the two together. Amen. What is the information? Daniel in the spirit, it was in the spirit of prophecy. He saw a time, our time, the time of the end. Because the Bible tells the angel at the tail end of in Daniel chapter 12, when Daniel said, when shall these things be? What is the time frame? The angel said, go your way, Daniel, and rest. He said, you will stand in your lot at the end of the times, at the end of the at the end of the period. So Daniel is standing in his lot now because the writings and prophecies of Daniel have forewarned us about the events that shall characterize the times that we are in right now. Now, so the first is information. Daniel saw a time of trouble ahead and Daniel saw the interventions of God. Amen. And not only that, Daniel saw what shall be the end of the whole story. You know, I like it when I, when I have information about how the story will end. That's one of the reasons I always say, 
I don't like watching football when Nigeria is playing. I'm not a football addict, but when Nigeria is playing, my heart will be pounding. And I will ask myself, are they going to share part of the money for you? You know, but if Nigeria was to play at play, and Nigeria defeated 4-3, and they now told me that as at uh, halftime it was 3-0 against Nigeria. But just when they were about to consider penalties, Nigeria scored the fourth one and we won. Now, if I'm watching that match, you know, my, my approach will be different. Because I know how the game ended. Huh? Information is power, you know. I know how the game ended. So even if it's 3-0, I just want to know how they scored the three. And I'm waiting to know how Nigeria will put in that last one. Brethren, the Spirit of God doth inform the saints. Such that you have information about your journey. And the devil will not take you unawares. We have certain fear. One, Daniel has for one does that there shall be a time of trouble. He says that kind of a time of trouble is the kind that has never been before. There are several things happening now that never happened before. When before did you read? Up to about 30 years, 20 years ago. That human beings will come out, koro koro, and say that we are, how did they even say that we are, we are queer, we are, there was something that, that we are gay, and then we are queer, we are coming for your children. Yeah, certain years ago, they would have been burnt on the stake, but now they are coming out. They say we are queer, we are gay, we are coming for your children. Now, now, we are now beginning to see robots. You see, it's a time of trouble. Some people see these things as excitement, but I don't see it at all. There are some dimensions of artificial intelligence that is a warfare against the soul of the believers. I have read that now they are making artificial intelligence is now bringing robots. They call it, what they even call it, there's a name they call them, a woman. A machine, a robot, beautifully made and has intelligence more than a human being. I was listening, to, I was watching one of them. And the robot will tell you everything you want about yourself. In fact, there's a particular one that they were asking the robot, speaking with the voice of a woman, seductively made. I was saying that uh, she knows how to satisfy a man, she knows she can cook, she can do this, she can sleep with a man, she knows what a man wants, she knows how to provide it. And one man, let me tell you, you think people will be, will say, how can that be? One man, I read it. They were selling that particular one. They gave, they gave name for it, about $7,000. And the man bought it. You know what the man said? The man said, at last he has found a wife. He said, at least this one will be loyal. I'm not telling you, I read it. $7,000. He said, you don't need to waste your money for a woman. This one is a machine you put in the house. It will cook for you, sleep with you, do everything for you. Are we in the time of the end or not? Daniel prophesied it. And don't be surprised. Many believers are now beginning to talk here and their feet are wavering. Things that we condemn before, we are beginning to allow them. Watch out, saints. The enemy is not coming with two horns again. He's coming well-dressed. But whichever way he appears, we are not ignorant of his devices. He will not take us unawares in Jesus' name. Our children shall not be taken unawares. They said they are coming for our children, but they are telling lies. Because the Bible says our children shall be taught of the Lord. They are not going to be taken. They can take, the, they said they don't want to marry. Woman, woman, man, man. You are, you, are, you are going for children of those who are doing it the way of God. That's the foolishness of the enemy. So the first information here is that a time of trouble shall come. Don't think every aspect of the time of trouble is gone. No. Subtility of the enemy is there. We're not ignorant of his devices. Part of the subtility is what I've told you now. Artificial intelligence. It's real. It's here. A lot of people are going to lose their jobs because artificial intelligence is taking over. They are now cars that can fly without, there are now cars that can move without a driver. It's already been used, even in UK. You enter at a depot, you enter it, there's no driver, it will take you from point A to point B and drop you where you are getting to. Brethren, the time, the end has come. 
By the time I read the one whereby they are making robotic wife, I said now they have it. They will be making robotic food and all manner of things later on. Now, so it's a time of trouble. We have been told before. So we are going to act with the information that we have been given. You are going to be better than those who don't have information. At least you now know that they say they are coming for your children. So it's not left for you to say, my own children shall not be part of them. Now, there are various ways of applying it all. I want to say something, brethren. All that glitters is not gold. I want to plead with you. If you are sending your children outside the country, pray again. Pray again. Pray again. And set a watch over them. I have discussed with several brethren. I'm not saying I have discussed with several brethren who have lost their children to what is going on at this time. Pray again. Because the world that the, the, the world that many of us grew up in our time is not the one we are seeing now. And it's going to get worse. So if you are sending your children to some of these countries, make sure you instruct them. Let me say this. The Spirit is pressing it on my spirit. There are some children you should not send outside the country. Don't, there are some children that should not go. Because they don't have the spiritual fiber to withstand what is going to come up around them. But when the Spirit of the Lord leads you, your children shall be arrows in the hands of the Lord. Even in those countries, I am very much certain that from amongst the church, even in Africa, God shall send arrowheads of his final visitation who shall be like these five stones of David that shall get into the head with the skull of Goliath. So don't be presumptuous. We have information. But then the good news is that we are told that there shall be a time of trouble. We are told that at that same time of trouble, Michael shall stand up. And any time Michael stands up, it's warfare. And any time Michael comes into a matter, it is victory. So we are told Michael shall stand up. At this time, Michael is standing up for us. It says, and then the information that is also promising is that thy people shall be delivered. So we are not going to be victims. We are going to be victors. Say everyone, but there's a clause. Everyone who shall be found what? Written in the book. So it's not for you to know those who shall be prey and then those who shall be victors. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Now so there is the attack of the enemy against the individual saints. There is the attack of the enemy against the church of God. And the devil attacks the church in segments. There is a satanic scheme to attack every local assembly that names the name of the Lord. And that's another area now. If there is any local... See, one of the, Satan knows the importance of the of the local church. Because in the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 19, 20, the Bible says that Jesus is the one seen, walking in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. And the seven golden lampstands, we are told there, are the local churches. So, there was a message in Revelation chapter 1, the Revelation chapter 1 to the churches, and Revelation chapter 1 also tells us a message to the angels of the churches. The angel of the churches speaks about the spiritual leadership. Now, we are told that Jesus Christ is very interested. To the extent that Jesus Christ introduced himself. He says, I am the one that walks in the midst of the candlesticks, and I hold the stars in my hands. The stars are the spiritual leadership. Jesus is saying, I hold them in my hands. So the devil is interested, that's what I'm saying, is interested in the local church. And several local churches these days have been infiltrated by the spirit of the age. Many local churches are nothing too much different from the citadels of Satan. And that is the world, this is in the word of God. It's even happened then. There was one to the church, particular church, the Lord says, you have a name. The name speaks about reputation. 
You have a name that you are alive, but actually you are dead. There are some local expressions today. They have all the glamour of life. Very good choir. The choir changes the dress attire every Sunday. Very good, perfected arrangement. Eh? I'm not saying those things are necessarily bad. But where the owner of the church is locked out, they are terrible. You see, Satan knows that an average man likes comfort. And today I can assure you that there are some believers who attend some churches not because of the life-giving spirit there, but because of the glamour and the environment. Some will go there, the choir members, some ten people. There are some that train. There's nothing wrong in it, but it is everything wrong if Christ is not there. We have members of the choir go through voice training from time to time, you know, and everything is perfected. The best instruments, everywhere, air conditioned, and it's as though you are in another world when you are there. But let me tell us something. No matter how neat it is, if God is not there, then it is not it. If God is not there, it doesn't serve a good purpose for your life. And I know this message is going beyond those here. It's going on the waves. And I trust the Lord that it will go like an arrow to get to the works of the enemy in the lives of certain persons. There are many brethren who started well, but who are now losing their placement. My prayer is that you will not lose your place. You will not give yourself to the glamour of this present time. And let me say something else. You see, there are certain young servants of God that God is raising up now. God has arrowheads that shall be instrumental in this final visitation. And there is a peculiar ministry, hand of the Lord, coming upon the younger ones. I believe it, and I know it. I have received it. Now, but you see, just as God is raising them, the enemy is also waiting for them. I'm aware that right now, there are some persons, they call them older ministries, established ministries, who are saying they want to mentor young ministers of God, and they provide physical and material things for them. They provide money for them, I would let you know how I got this information. I'm not talking by what I say. I've been involved in counseling somebody who was involved. Who was approached by some people from America, a servant of God who had a church. He was discussing with me. He's not in Nigeria. And they came to him, not only to him, to a few servants of God in that particular place. And they told them that, um, you know, they've just come to help the work of the Lord in their area. And they look at their church, they give them money, they buy instruments for them, give them money. And then, you see, Satan doesn't give you anything for nothing. There's no free lunch in the kingdom of darkness. And he told me his own experience, that they now told them that, uh, no, they invited him, but somebody who was there, who was in the U.S., came back and alerted him about the danger. Now, what, but he made them. And they give you everything, and then they told him that they wanted him to come over to U.S., and that they were going to pay something that is beyond comprehension. They were $2,000 every, every day. You know, he was to be there, and he was there. And when he got there, he discovered that he didn't really, he saw a congregation quite thorough, but it was not really what he expected. The long and short of it was that later on, he was asking, what is the name of the church? He said they said it is homo, homo church. Homo church. Who think this is happening now? It's happening. I spoke with the person. Now, and before you say I, I don't want to mention the name of the country. My wife knows what I'm talking about. They had corrupted many servants of God. They came, began to give them titles. This one that was simple, they made him a bishop. This one made him an apostle. And they organized big ceremonies for them. And they give them money. Don't go too far. In Nigeria here, some years ago, at Ikeja, in a particular hotel in Ikeja, I have the information. There was a so-called servant of God who caused younger servants of God, brought them to the hotel, and came with bags of money. And was distributing money to the younger 
servants of God. So Satan is buying their loyalty. But then things are happening. Now so, are, when you are looking for the attack, don't think somebody will just come on a Sunday morning with a gun. It's happening. But that's not the only t- t- tactics of Satan. And say, okay, everybody here. No, no, no. Satan is coming in three-piece suits. He's coming with big barbaric guy, well-dressed, clean-shaven. He had come as horns. People recognized him. He's now coming, you know, packaged. Very well packaged. People are not recognizing. People are looking at the packaging and the glamour. They are not checking the spirit inside. May the spirit of the Lord keep our spirits alive. That we shall not fall prey to all this in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, there is warfare of the saints at this time of the end. But the Bible says, we shall be delivered as we are, our names are written in the book. That's why Jesus Christ said, don't rejoice. The primary reason for your rejoicing is not that the demons are subject to you, but what? That your name is written in heaven. Because when your name is there, power and authority that is in the right direction flows from there. There is true power and authority. But there is one that is false. And there are people today who are dishing these things out. You know, like water. But God is not there. It's not everything that glitter that is gold. So we are talking about the character of the attack of the enemy against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there is an attack system against the local church. And that is where his, head, that is where his activity is. That is the reason why we will not take anything for granted in any local church. Any local church that has the evidence of divine life must be as sens- sensitive in the spirit. It's not everything that is accepted. Let me also tell you one of the tactics before I move on, which also I have adequate information about. Now, there are some people today whom the enemy is sending to some local assemblies as money bags. Yes, I mean it, as money bags. They are members of the local churches. They sponsor crusades. They sponsor everything. But they work their way to the leadership of the local assembly. I have information. So that's the reason why, you know, everyone at this time of the end must know that we are in the days of warfare. And the the character of the warfare at this time is not in the conventional way. That's why the Bible says we should not be ignorant of these vices. Satan will not always come in a way you can recognize him. It will come in certain ways that you cannot recognize. Even in your personal life, it will come. The Bible says don't be surprised because Satan himself disguises as an angel of light. These are all things I have known about certain sisters who have fallen prey. When certain tongue-talking when I mean tongue, tongue, sweet talking, young men will approach them. And there's this brother who does not even know how to knot a tie. But maybe the counsel of God. May the Lord give us understanding. 